Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and this is Ace Booktubers Recommend Ace Books. I myself identify as Demi and Grey, and I asked a bunch of other booktubers who also identify as Ace to give me some recommendations. I didn't really put any limits on what people could send me besides no more than three books at a time, so there is some doubling up in these clips, but I decided to just leave them all alone, because everybody that likes the books that are mentioned more than once in this sometimes like them for slightly different reasons, so I wanted you to get all of those perspectives. Additionally, this is not an exhaustive list. I will have more resources down below and I'm going to come back at the end of the video to talk about a few of the books that didn't make it onto the list from the other booktubers that I would personally recommend. Hey all, my name is Erin and I'm a fantasy and queer romance author. Typically on my channel I would talk to you about romance and tropes, but today I'm going to be talking to you about Bloody Spade by Brittany M. Willows. This delightful fantasy is probably the queerest book I have read maybe ever? Every POV character is queer, I think every side character is queer, and there's not a sniff of queer phobia to be found. Bloody Spade is told in four perspectives, Yori, Ellen, Kiani, and Alexander. Three of the four of them are on the ace and arrow spectrums, and that is explicitly stated on the page. Ellen is Grey Ace, which is an orientation she shares with the author. Kiani is both demi-romantic and demisexual, and Alexander is aromantic. There's tons of other queer rep in here too. Our other POV character, Iori, is Pan, and side characters are lesbian, trans, there's a non-binary neo-pronouns user, and a few bi characters too. Now that you know about the rep, let me tell you a little bit more about the story. Bloody Spade is an urban fantasy that's set in a fictionalized version of Earth, specifically in the city of Hildegrand. The story kicks off about seven years after the re-emergence, which was the introduction of magic into this world. It did not go so well for any of our POV characters. All of them became magic users due to that event. So the reemergence destabilized the entire world with the introduction of magic, and basically everyone kind of had to scramble with how to deal with that. A government organization called Cardplay was developed to sort of organize and train these magical people so that they could fight ink blots, which are manifestations of void magic that will basically kill or corrupt souls if they're not dealt with. Those who did not have the fortune of developing their powers after card play was a thing were forced by the government to suppress their magic. Society kind of oscillates between wanting these magic users to fight the void and these ink blots for them, and also being terrified of the magic users themselves. Let me tell you about the leads. Iori is basically made of trauma. I have adopted him as my son, he's an absolute sweetheart underneath all of the panic, and he's also a cat boy, so what's not to love? <laughs> the void that taints his magic is what gave him his cat ears and his cat tail, as well as some magically enhanced grace and hearing, in case you were curious. Ellen is cute as a goddamn button. She is a super sweet and bubbly soul who just wants to see the best in everyone, and I feel like we could all use an Ellen in our life because she would believe in us even when we don't believe in ourselves. Alexander is, <laughs> well, he's kind of a butthead. But he's an excellent character nonetheless, and he's just made of feelings. Kiani is a fair bit of a mystery for a good chunk of the book, so I'm not going to tell you really anything about her, and you'll just have to read and figure all that stuff out about her for yourself. The character growth that we get out of all of them is just <sniffs> chef's kiss. All of the characters are just wonderful and vibrant, and there's lots of action, there's plenty of awesome friendships, and there's even a super adorable budding romance. There are so many good lines in this book, and there's also extremely cute art to accompany it. If you are following the author on Twitter, which you should because she's a delight, then you'll get to see all of it. The writing itself is great, it's super easy to read, got some nice poeticness going on, and it just kind of pulls you along through the story. This book is thick, but it doesn't feel long when you're reading it, which I love. I have cried, I have laughed, I have squealed, and I have cursed over this book. It will push you through the full spectrum of human emotion. All the content warnings for the book are listed on its Goodreads page, as well as anywhere that you might want to buy it, it's right there in the description for you. Bloody Spade isn't out quite yet, but it is available for pre-order right now, and it will be published on September 15th, 2021. If you want to have the best time reading and support a queer indie author, then I highly recommend that you check out Bloody Spade and Brittany herself because she's lovely. It's super cute. You're gonna love it. Thanks for having me, Kathy. Bye! 
Hello, my name is Wilma or Will. I am life goofer in drag and I use they them pronouns in and out of drag. You can watch my booktube videos and book content over at NB Reads on YouTube. My Instagram is life goofer. I am asexual, panromantic, and non-binary and today I'm going to recommend you a uh, ace book. So this is Ace, What Asexuality Reveals About Desire Society and the Meaning of Sex by Angela Chen. This is an absolutely must read when it comes to asexuality. The title pretty much reveals exactly what it's about. Angela Chen goes into her own experience with asexuality, what it means, what different relationships can look like. There's only really one picture of what asexuality looks like and even though 1% of the population is asexual, there is very little representation in the media and especially when it comes to intersectionality and this book w talks about what it is like being disabled asexual being a person of color and asexual and everything that entails i adored this book for everything that it said i even had my mom read it but i especially enjoyed it because angela chen's experience of sexuality mirrored my own in a lot of ways and I saw myself in her and in this book a lot. I think this book is absolutely essential in also understanding how obsessed we are as a society with like sex and that anyone who especially actually if you're not asexual, if you're allosexual, things that you can learn and a new perspective you can see the world through because I think asexuals have a lot of to offer to the world and we have a unique perspective on relationships and sex that many people maybe not consider and this book talks about all those different things. I highly recommend this one. I think it's absolutely fantastic. The audiobook is great and it's read by Angela Chen herself so please check it out. So I felt the need to give you like a little mini recommendation and shout out to this essay um, collection. So this is We Can Do Better Than This by Amelia Abraham. This is a fabulous LGBTQIA plus like essay anthology. I think it is absolutely essential. It does focus on LGBTQIA plus suffering and discrimination. So if that's a trigger for you or if it's hard for you to read, please keep that in mind when you go into this book. But I think this is so, so fabulous. It was released like in June. It is incredibly intersectional. It talks about what it's being queer in loads of different countries, in countries where it's illegal, what it means being queer and disabled, queer and deaf, queer and trans. Such variety and diversity in this book and the different also queer um, identities together. But because this video is all about that ace, I want to talk about the essay that is in this by Yasmin Benoit. Yasmin Benoit is a asexual, a romantic activist and spokesperson. She's also a model and she talks a lot about debunking the myths of what asexuality looks like and she started the hashtag this is what ace looks like. She has a TED talk which I highly recommend checking out and she has now a highlight on her Instagram that shows all the hate and discrimination that she receives daily on tweets and all that stuff where people say horrible things because she's asexual and the all ace phobia that exists out there and her essay goes into that as well talking about how much <laughs> ace phobia there is and I think people don't really take time to debunk those ideas because there is so little visibility and I hear even people within the queer community say like of course ace like is accepted into the LGBTQ plus community and it's not based on like the discrimination but I think this is just a lot of misinformation that people don't know about because asexual conversion therapy is still very normal. My asexual identity is the last thing I disclose when I go on dates or want to get romantically involved in someone because there's so many preconceived notions of that identity. So I hope you will check out We Can Do Better Than This as well as Ace by Angela Chen. A huge thank you to Kathy for having me on her channel. Please subscribe. And here's the next person who's going to recommend some Ace books for you. Hi, I'm Alex. I'm from the channel Alex's Books. It's a very small and new channel. I am an asexual booktuber and the book I'm recommending to you today is Let's Talk About Love by Claire Kahn. This book follows Alice who is asexual and biromantic and it starts off with her girlfriend breaking up with her because she's asexual and then it goes on to just follow her summer and it just follows her kind of coming to understand that she can still find love and that people will accept her asexuality, they won't all be like that girlfriend from the start of the book and I just really really enjoyed it. I just found the asexual rap in this book so 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 relatable and it was just so similar to how it feels for me and it was like Alice was 
explaining parts of her asexuality and I was like that's me that's how I feel and it was the most seen I have ever felt in a book and it just meant so much to me. Obviously in the first chapter it shows her girlfriend breaking up with her because she's asexual and so obviously that's already quite sad but then there's also other parts where she's talking about her asexuality and her romantic attraction and the fact that she does experience romantic attraction and it was just all just so relatable and so sad and like that feeling of am I ever gonna find someone and like I was crying in the first chapter <laughs> which I've never done in a book before so I definitely highly highly recommend this book it was just absolutely amazing and I, j I just don't have words it was perfect <laughs> bye hey it's Becca from the book sanctum and I'm going to be recommending the wayward children series by Shauna Maguire specifically every heart a doorway because this book specifically focuses on Nancy who is an ace sexual character who has just come back from her own portal fantasy adventure and she's having to adjust to real life again in the real world and I love the series it's wonderfully intersectional each book has a different set of characters or focuses on a certain set of characters each one with a different intersectional identity and this one specifically is about asexuality and I absolutely love it the world building is brilliant the writing is beautiful and generally I love these books and Nancy is definitely one of my favorites hello everybody this is is Boston from Boston Reads Books and I am here today to recommend you a fantastic asexual rep book and that would be for me Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. This is one of the first books that I read where I was like I think I might be asexual and it really helps me come to terms with that easily and in a way I understood and this book will always be a favorite of mine because of that. So this is about a girl who can journey into people's souls while they are sleeping and in every soul that she visits there is a black door and her mother has always told her never go through the black door, just don't do it, just ignore it, whatever. But obviously we have to have some conflict here, uh, a starting point for our book and she goes through the black door and what she finds is not what she expects. So yeah, highly recommend this in terms of asexual rep and also just in general because it's a wonderful fantasy book. So if you are looking for a really fun fantasy with a really dark love interest, then I would highly suggest this. Hello everyone, my name is Darian from the channel Darian Reads. I mostly read YA fantasy and contemporary books with also adult fantasy. I basically read everything except for horror and the book with ace rep that I want to recommend is Beyond the Black Door by A.M. Strickland. This is a book that I read really recently and it is definitely one of my favorite books that I've read this year. Also one of my favorite books of all time now. This book follows this girl named named Kamai who is a soul walker which means that when other people are asleep she can travel through their souls and in this world it is extremely dangerous to be a soul walker if people found out there could be really bad consequences so Kamai keeps the fact that she is a soul walker a secret but her mother is the only one who knows about her power and her mother has always showed her the way of soul walking and in every single soul that Kamai has traveled into there has always been this mysterious black door that her mother has warned her not to open, never go inside until one day her mother tragically passes away and Kamai is left on her own to figure out what to do next and eventually she opens the black door and that's all I really want to say about this book. I feel like it's best going into this knowing as little as possible but I absolutely adored this book. I really love A.M. Strickland's writing and throughout the book Kamai is discovering her asexuality and trying to figure out how she feels, what this means for her, and the way that asexuality is described in this book. It is the most realistic depiction of asexuality for me personally. I have never felt so seen reading a book and if you are asexual I just highly recommend picking this up because I really want other people to feel the way that I felt reading this book. I just thought it was really beautiful. I just really recommend this book to everyone whether you're asexual or not. I think it's just such an amazing story and I would love for more people to pick this up because I find this book is definitely underhyped especially on booktube. So yeah please read this book. Definitely recommend this book. Hello and thanks for letting me be here to make some recommendations. I'm Marissa of the Ace Visibility and Representation platform Ace Chat. 
I also had a column on Anomaly where I review books by Ace and Arrow authors. Go check it out. So the first book I want to recommend is called Alatsoe, and it is by Darcy Little Badger. This book is part mystery, part fantasy, part, I guess, kind of like magical realism-esque area. It starts off with its main character, Ellie, who is a Liban Apache teen, and she has to figure out how her cousin died and then figure out all of these other mysteries surrounding his death, surrounding this town that we're just gonna say is problematic for a few reasons. <laughs> Ellie herself is Arrow Ace, and the representation is overt. We hear several times Ellie talking about how much her family means to her, or her friends mean to her, and the representation there of these relationships with her friends, one in particular with her family, is just handled so well and lets you see just how important this is to her and can be to people just really driving home romance sex don't need to be the main things in your life actually the most important relationship in this book might be between ellie and her dog who is dead and a ghost and she has this power to uh, speak with ghosts and kind of bring them back and don't want to say too much but it's this fun little element to the story that gets explored in detail that also relates to Liban Apache mythos culture. So you're learning while you're reading, while you're getting the representation. Really, what else could you ask for? For the next suggestion, we are going to go into the realm of nonfiction and discuss Maya Kobabe's Genderqueer, a memoir. Genderqueer is already unique because it is a graphic memoir. It has really cool looking pictures. <laughs> Everything about this story is real, really happened to the author. Kobabe uses specific pronouns, which was actually entirely new to me. So again, love the education. <laughs> he talks about air journey going from childhood to young adulthood in regards to air gender identity, air uh, sexuality in general. And the way these two concepts kind of overlapped and sometimes created more confusion, created more understanding, it's, it's just a very honest telling of how trying to figure yourself out sometimes means having to figure all of yourself out and just the hurdles and the joys of that process. So if you're having any questions regarding your own sexuality, any questions regarding your gender identity, any questions regarding both, <laughs> because a lot of members of the ACE community do fall under the trans non-binary flag spectrum, this is a great book to help you get to some answers or at least start knowing the questions to be asking and to feel emboldened and empowered to ask those questions. So to end these recommendations, I want to focus on Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Don Bowman. This novel is upsetting. This novel is hard to get through at some places, but it is so worthwhile for exactly that reason. The story starts off with Rumi, who is mourning the death of her sister, who died in a car crash that Rumi was also involved in. Throughout the book, we learn more about Rumi's relationship with her sister, Leah, as well as her relationship with her mother, which has become fairly estranged. So that already is a pretty heavy backdrop. Add to that the fact that Rumi is just starting to figure out herself in terms of her sexuality. She is just starting to really understand herself in terms of her Hawaiian roots when she moves to Hawaii. Music also plays a huge role in the book. And I think it goes to show how your passions and love can be towards your family, which roomies definitely are. They can also be towards your ambitions, your talents. And it's not like it has to be one or the other, but it can be some of all of these things. The grief in this book is powerful. The love in this book is powerful. This book is just powerful. Those are my recommendations. Thank you again so much for letting me share them. I could go on and on and on. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm Sasha from The Wild Sasha. Yes, I have a booktube channel. As you can hear, my English is not perfect. I'm not a native English speaker, whatever, so hopefully you can still understand me. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about some books with ace representation. I'm here to recommend them to you because as an ace person, I actually enjoy them. The first one I'm gonna recommend to you is a 
favorite of mine it's my favorite series of all time maybe I'm not sure because I have so many series I actually love but I love this one for so many reasons and it is Every Heart the Doorway by Sean Maguire which is a part of the We Were Children series it is a fantasy it is a portal fantasy in these books you have kids going uh, back and to different worlds that was actually made for them some are coming back to the real life kind of thing and have to cope with the fact that they are not in the other world anymore and they're going to a special school for them to help them cope with that and it's so much more than that it's so much more about discovering who you really are and accepting who you really are and accepting the fact that others are not always there to understand you and to accept you as you are but in this school you can be who you really are there is one ace character in that story i would not say that it focus on ace uh character like on the ace character but i love that it has that representation it was actually the first book i have ever read with ace representation so it has like i mean i'm emotionally linked to it and yeah, I really recommend it. It's one of my favorite series ever. Another book that I've read this year that has its representation and which focuses on that because the main character is going to discover what a what it means actually what asexuality means and it is beyond the black door by am strickland so basically what you have in this story is the mom and the daughter being able to walk into people's souls when they are sleeping and it's not something that's actually acceptable or at least the people who are capable of that are not free to do so let's say and there is always like whenever the two so the mom and the daughter travels to someone's souls and they are in there the girl sees a black door and her mom keeps telling her don't ever ever open that door of course she's gonna do it she's gonna open that door and that's the beginning of so many questions but discoveries as well and the way asexuality is explained in this book I really enjoyed it because it was seen as absolutely normal like the way it was explained is like you had some kind of map in there and everyone whatever your orientation you were on that map and that's what i really enjoyed it so i'm not gonna say more because i want you to be surprised but i really really did enjoy everything about this book it was almost a five stars for me almost a five stars so that's telling you you need to pick it up but yeah just to wrap this up i have another book here that i have not read that is on my tbr that has apparently ace representation as well and this is beneath the citadel by destiny soraya i have no idea what it is about but apparently it is about the citadel and visiting the ruins the citadel deep beneath the citadel the executioner was waiting it's on my tbr i got it from a bookish box and i cannot wait to read it because i have not seen many people talking about that one especially saying that it was ace representation i have not seen many people talking about that book or reading that book and i have not seen many people saying that there was some kind of representation in it so i'm really curious to get to it hopefully this year and the cover is gorgeous i love that kind of cover it's kind of shiny but not too shiny it's black and gold i really do love it i really hope if you have not picked them up that you will and that you will enjoy them and if not not every single book is for everyone these are books i loved i mean two of them the third one i have not read thank you so much for listening to my recommendations and my babbling and me not making sense with a weird accent see you maybe on my channel and until then have a nice day and i hope you're gonna enjoy this video bye Hey, I'm Shar Shar Shar, and I'm here to recommend three aromantic short stories. The first one, To Unmask a Witch by Agnes Tealeaf. This has um, an old woman who lives in the woods, and there's these three, three or four uh, children trying to sneak up on her because they think she's a witch and they're looking for proof and it's just full of mischief and bravery and not meeting people's expectations and that being okay. The second story, A Problem Unsolved by Candy Peel, again features a witch and a love potion and getting some really good advice and I'm being really vague on purpose because my first attempt to do this audio I totally spoiled the story so 
you'll just have to read it. The third one is And a Monster Steals Your Children by Arrow Snowflake. In this one, the people in wherever they are, forest, a town, they believe that this like evil entity in a tower causes things to be quote wrong with their children by stealing pieces of their soul. And the main character, who's a child that this supposedly happened to, goes to confront whatever's in this tower and it's not what it seems. I just thought this was such a great metaphor. It was painful and cathartic and just really moved me. So I hope you enjoy these stories. Bye! Hi, it's me again. Thank you so, so much to all of these wonderful human beings for being in this collaboration. All of their links are down below, so be sure to go check them out after this video. I also had a submission from Sabina underscore Reads, who didn't want to be part of the video, but wanted to make sure that we recommend these books. The first one being A Lot's Way, which we've previously heard of in this video. The second one being Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. And the third one being The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. And to that, I would say it's actually the second book in the series that you would want to read because that is the ace protagonist. I also wanted to make sure to mention If It Makes You Happy by Claire Kahn because even though we've talked about Let's Talk About Love previously in this video, this one features a queer platonic relationship which I absolutely love seeing because I had never seen it before and I was actually in one at the time so that was very exciting. Someone else also wanted to recommend Other People's Butterflies. It's about an Arrow Ace high school student named Gwen and her misadventures trying to understand her classmates before realizing she is Arrow Ace. There's also a cool element where Gwen makes her role model this fictional femme fatale from the 1940s and I adore the meta of the character looking for representation too. That sounds great, it's definitely on my TBR now. If you're looking for an ace romance, I always have to say Upside Down by N.R. Walker. This one is just the cutest thing in the entire world. One person who already knows their ace, another person who knows their ace but is coming more into the understanding of it and getting into a relationship while being ace. There's also Demi representation in The Sound of Stars, there's a side ace character in The Summer of Everything, and one of the point of view characters in Sawkill Girls is also ace. Before I go, I also wanted to recommend the Arrow Ace database, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a database of all the Arrow and Ace characters that people can find and compile into that list. And I've linked down below at least one Instagram post by Reed Andy Reed. A have a great list going, and A do great posts all the time. Before I go, I have one more book to mention. It's not a recommendation because I haven't read it yet because it literally just got to me from the publisher, and that's My Luck by Mel Todd. All I know about this is it's queer fantasy, the main character is ace, and the secondary character is a lesbian. That's all I really need to know to want to read this, so thank you so much to the publisher for sending this to me. This is actually the first in a four book series, and all of the books are out now, so if this is right up your alley, maybe check it out. This is not an exhaustive list though, so go out there. If you have recommendations for us, please let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't feel like leaving a comment but want to make sure that I know you are here, just leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. Some people have asked if there's a way to financially support this channel, so I set up a coffee account, which is a digital tipping service. The link for that is down below, as well as the link to my PayPal and my Amazon wish list in case you would like to buy me a book, because a lot of these ended up on my wish list. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you very soon. Bye!